we've lived in this house actually my whole life. Like my parents came here, they lived with my grandma, which will pass your house actually. My grandma and my aunt lived there, literally down the street from us. They've also lived there since they came to the US about 26 years ago for my parents. My grandma's been here a little longer. Unfortunately, I grew up in a civil war. When I was 10 years old at that time, civil war started in Lebanon. And I spent pretty much most of my youth and teenage and my college back in Lebanon while civil war was going on. There is supposed to be a ceasefire in the Lebanon, but it means nothing. There have been 28 ceasefires, and each of them has been followed by even fiercer fighting. It's now a year since Lebanon's social tensions finally and inevitably exploded into war. We used to bike here all the time, walk here. Grandma would make us dinner, then we'd just go home. Or if we wanted like treats and candy, we'd just go there. She would always spoil us. That's probably why we were heavier set kids. Because we're so close to grandma. We have over 18 or 22 different religions in this very small country. And when civil war started at that point, it started between Christian and Palestinian refugees in Lebanon. And lasted about a few months, and all of a sudden, the war converted from being Lebanese-Palestinian to Christians-Muslims. And then the war started taking different phases. We used to go to Lebanon all the time when I was younger. But we went to Lebanon last summer, and it was actually to really see what he went through and where he lived being older, where he went to college, everything he went through, it kind of, it makes you feel very blessed. Seeing like seven kids in a small house or working for his dad, this little shack he showed us. All of a sudden you start seeing Muslims fighting Muslims, Christians fighting Christians, uh, Muslims, Druze, everybody fighting for power and positioning in a country. And they split the country at that time to literally five, six pieces. Uh, I was from South Lebanon to come to Beirut to finish my education. I used to take the boat because I couldn't travel through the land because I would have been killed if I was caught on the road as a Christian traveling from South to Beirut. They're just hearing the stories that they're like, you know, they're lucky to be alive. Like when you talk to my mom, she's kind of hard of hearing in one ear because so many bombs went off around her house that you know, some days they didn't know what they were gonna wake up to, or every day I kinda wake up to a nice breakfast, clean room, clean house. Or for them, every day was kind of like a question mark what was gonna happen the next day. We came here because of the war. We went through a lot, John and I, and you don't wanna know what we went through. It's really disaster. When we came here, we came because we need peace. We cannot keep doing that over there, especially if we want to raise a family over there. There is no peace over there. My father passed away here. He came to visit my brothers and got very ill and passed away. And his last wish for my older brother to bring the rest of the family to the U.S. because it's safer. And at that point, we could be all together, all of the siblings together. So my older brother honored my dad's last wish, and he started the process, and we end up moving all of us to Detroit. Nothing was given to him. He didn't come from a high-income family in Lebanon, and then when he came to the U.S., he had no money in his pocket. Started working at salons, and if you see my dad, he's bald, so it doesn't really work. Around 1989, 1990, I started small business exporting cars and auto parts from Detroit to the Middle East. And after Gulf War I, pretty much I went out of business, and then I start looking for a small local business to start. And then his buddy told him about the gas station business and said, you should get into it, like, you'd do well. I struggled at first accepting the idea of being in a gas station, but uh, then I said, I'll give it a shot. I tried it, I like it. Still couldn't speak the language when he bought his first gas station. So he'd have a dictionary in one hand 
and he would talk to the customer in the, with the other hand and kind of translate back and forth what he was doing. From that point on, I decided to start expanding. Then next thing you know, he bought two, then three, then four, then five, and he just kept expanding. He owns liquor stores, he owns Tim Hortons, and he actually just bought a resort and hotel in Lebanon. For us, we always tell them, if you have any job anywhere, remember guys, around this circle, there is no one. Family is number one, and the rest come number two. To be successful in life, even though you could be successful as a businessman, but you could be failure as a father or failure as a, a family person, that means you did not accomplish anything. Uh, first accomplishment is to have a true family, good family, loving one another and supporting each other. I think the boys will see how much we're doing for them. Maybe this is very important in their life for the future, for their family, that when you have a child, you have to make sure you're not alone anymore. There is somebody else you have to take care and have to put them in the right road. He didn't understand the game of hockey, but he understand work ethic. He knew when I worked hard, he knew when I didn't. If I scored two goals, I would come in the car after some games, he'd be like, you, you didn't play well. I'm like, what do you mean? I scored two goals, Dad. He goes, you didn't work hard. You didn't back check. You didn't four check hard. You got lucky and scored two goals, but that doesn't mean you played well. You got lucky today. And then it's kind of what he didn't say. Like, well, win or lose, you can control your work. I think you can control how hard you work. And it's the same thing with off the ice. There's days he would sit, he would actually sit in our driveway in a lawn chair and run sprints from my brother and I for hours and hours on end. Many kids play hockey. Dad or mom played the game before, or some relative played the game, and they gave them all the tips, advice, support, the whole nine yards. Pretty much we're starting from scratch, even though I didn't know where to buy his gears from to start with. But the message was, if that's the game you choose, you must give it 100% day in, day out. By end of the day, no matter how successful you are, you could look at the mirror and see yourself and you say, I give it my best shot. He wanted us to give it everything we got, and he wanted us to instill work ethic in us like we always talk about. And he, if we weren't gonna do something 100%, then he said not to do it. Like if you don't wanna give hockey 100%, then just go play for your high school. There's no reason to pay for AAA, there's no reason to pay for travel hockey. If you wanna do it for fun, that's fine. But if you wanna to go to the next level, and if you wanna make it and be successful in it like he has in business, then this is what it takes, and he wanted to show us what it took to get to that level. The Spartans trying to respond here. Stevens shot, doesn't get through. Gafari scores! Boutras Gafari squeezes it in from the blue line, and Michigan State opens up their scoring. I have a quote on my phone that says, prove him wrong. Because so my dad first came to the US, people said, oh, don't do gas stations. Some people told him to, some people told him not to. Some people said, why are you going back to Lebanon to start this foundation, like it's not safe? And he always just said, prove him wrong. Like, People said you aren't going to play Division One hockey because you started at 10 years old. Prove them wrong. People say you're too short to play. Prove them wrong. Doesn't matter what aspect it is in life, you know, whether it's four-pointing an exam or beating a top-rated team or just winning one drill in practice. Just prove them wrong. If you asked me this question 15 years ago, would you ever see your kid play in D1 sport? I would have laughed at you. End of the day. Uh, if he ended up playing hockey or he moved on to real life. I'm very proud and I cannot say enough how grateful and pleased I am with the accomplishment he made up to this point. I think about all the things my parents went through in Lebanon during the war, not being safe every day, to what I have here where I can, I wake up and I just drive to the rink, like I don't have any worries. I'm just like, I'm good to go, I'm safe, I'm sound. Like, I come to the rink, work hard every day and try to instill what my dad instilled in me and my teammates. It doesn't matter if we're up five nothing or we're down three nothing, like we have been before. If you keep working hard, things will happen right.